Greetings everybody, this is Paul the Inventory King. Hope you guys are all having an awesome day and enjoying your fish. As always, I would be honored if you guys could click the subscribe button and the notification bell and join me on my fish keeping adventures by subscribing. So, as we know, I beefed up the stand on one of my previous videos for the saltwater reef tank. Now, on this video, what we're doing is we're finishing it up. We're adding, you know, the uh, plywood and adding some last little bit of touches. Um, so we're gonna go through this video. We're gonna speed it up, have a little video montage of how this thing got ready to where it's at today. But the stand is ready. It is ready for the tank. Now I gotta just get the tank ready. So what I did on this here was I put it on the floor and I set the stand on top of it to trace the inside uh, so currently we are using this sucker and a face mask for um, safety and we're gonna cut it out okay so we have a jigsaw and what we're doing is cutting out the tracings for the plywood on the bottom of the stand so again what you want to do is you want to get your plywood on the ground put the stand over it and then you just get a pen marker and you trace it out and then you cut it apart. Super easy. It's nice to have a jigsaw for this part. So check that out. We got all of this cut out with the jigsaw here. So we're gonna pull this off and test it. So you can see here where I traced it out. What we did was we put the tank on here and we leaned it to where the bulkheads were barely tapping here. Uh, my brother held it up and then I traced this out. So what I need to do now is cut this out so that when we set the tank on top, the bulkheads are gonna clear this section of the two x four and be good to go. One thing I would definitely recommend is use a jigsaw on this part unless you have a really good skill saw. Mine wasn't working so well and using the jigsaw was a lot better. Plus, I would say it's a lot safer. Also, I did have to notch these out more, so whatever you trace out on your tank where your bulkheads are, I would cut it more than you think, quite a bit more. Whew, kinda scary using uh, equipment with blades on it when they're turning around. Um, so we're, we're good here. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this a bit uh, or use a planer and then uh, we could get the uh, plywood on top, measure out and cut the plywood. We're getting close. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and get this thing in now, which it seems like this should be the right way. Check that, check that out. Woo -hoo -hoo. Nice. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, a piece of wood here, here, and probably in these spots here, just so it holds it and we're good to go. All right, so like I said, you're gonna go ahead and cut out your bracing on the side. I ended up going with two on each side near the end and uh, definitely do the pilot holes and countersink if you want those screws to go in nicely without cracking anything and for the screw heads to not show. Very simple process and uh, it looks good and it strengthens up the stand which is super, super important. Especially when you're gonna have something like a sump so what you do is make yourself a, uh, a guide, like how far you want it spaced, and then you just butt it up against here and butt it up against here, and it's gonna be spaced perfectly. Yeah, it's super awesome to do that little guide there. I have OCD and everything being symmetrical is pretty important. Um, and again, don't, uh, my suggestion would be, and what I did was I didn't skimp out on it. I made sure I added these, I added some other cross braces because if you're gonna have a sump under there, that's a lot of weight. You wanna make sure that it's gonna hold that up and not give you any issues. All right, so check it out. This is the bottom, it is in. We got this as a cross brace, we got this as a cross brace, and we have this as a cross brace, and then we have 
these four here so that it's got something to rest on. All right, so check it out. We got the, um, again, plywood on the bottom. It's looking awesome. It's super sturdy. Got all of the screws countersunk on the whole stand. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, putting some caulk uh, or spackling on that and then sanding it once it dries. The back, I didn't really worry about because obviously you don't see the back. This side we got it done on. So we're gonna go ahead and install the top board now, the um, plywood for the top, and then we're going to spackle, caulk, and let it dry. All right, so what I'm gonna do is on all these gaps here, I'm gonna caulk all of that Probably going to also caulk in these gaps too, so it's a nice tight seal and no chance for moisture to get into these cracks and mold. Alright, so we got the top piece of plywood all set and ready to go and uh, walk around with a pen and uh, marked out where I want to do the pilot holes and the countersink holes and just start going to town. Just drill, 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 drill. I'm sure you're probably like, man, that's a lot of screws, Paul. Well, uh, again, I'm, I'm a, I like redundancy and a little bit more to me is better. So as you can see, we're getting really close, everyone. The one thing that I don't like is with the plywood being level here, um, I don't have a chance to make sure the tank is level. So I went and bought the foam, but I don't want the foam to be sticking up. So I got this piece of lumber here, one by two, and I'm going to just build on top of this and then fill in the gaps to make it look nice so that um, everything's gonna work out the way I want it to. All right, so you can see that I got the pieces cut out here. Uh, so now I'm gonna take this off and then start building on top of this. All right, so you can see that I have got a handful of these uh, screws put in. Now I need to move the um, channel locks over here to make sure that this is straight. And then I do this side. All right, so now that we got this lined up the way we want it, we need to go ahead and start with the pilot hole. So we're gonna go ahead and start right about here. Now after you're done with your initial pilot holes, get a big bit that the head is a little bit bigger than your screw head to build for the countersink, or drill for the countersink, excuse me. All right, so now you can see these are all ready to go. So they've been piloted down through this board and into the beginning of this. We got the countersink set. So now we just need to go ahead and get this thing screwed down. So there you have it. You can see there's this gap, which I will fill with wood putty or caulking or something, but uh, it's sitting right on top. Now we have a bit of a gap here and that's just because of how this is. I'm trying to line it up as best as I could. I'll fill this in obviously. So there you go. Each one of those is set and we'll sand this down and then fill these up with spackle or putty. It'll be smooth and beautiful. All right, so we are ready to spackle everything now. This thing is coming together. So the stand is definitely coming together. What I am doing now is obviously, as you can see, I'm sanding all of the areas where I spackled the countersink holes so that the screws were hidden. So you definitely want to do that. Now, as you can see, I am priming the inside of the stand. I did caulk it like I mentioned I would because I wanted it to just be really tight, a real tight seal. So definitely prime it. That's my opinion um, because I like having uh, that seal over the lumber. Uh, so if there was anything on the old lumber that had odor, it's gonna cover that up. Um, again, that's just me, that's how I like to do it. Man, can you imagine if we were able to paint this fast? How nice would that be? <laughs> 
and you want to try to you know get it on as smooth as possible that's what I like to do because I want the paint to you know go on smooth uh, what I'm having to do here actually was put some pieces of 2x4 underneath so that I can easily paint the bottom section I didn't realize that um, it was I was gonna get paint all over the floor if I didn't do that glad I caught it all right it's ready to get painted now the primers dry let's paint it up now comes the fun part getting the stand painted nice black it uh, you know I like black furniture I think it looks absolutely amazing um, now you might be asking yourself, do I have to actually go through all this, adding all this support and strength and, you know, everything that I've done? You know, I probably would have been okay with how it was because that's how it was manufactured. Um, the fact that the stand had been used and there was a little bit of water damage on the inside where you could tell it got wet and the plywood bottom was really soft in an area, I thought that it would be a good idea to redo it because... I'm not about to put a reef tank on top of this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of money that goes into starting a saltwater reef tank. I'm not about to have the stand collapse on me and lose, you know, my investment on, you know, the fish, the coral, the rock, you know, everything that comes with having a saltwater reef tank. So for me, I thought it was a good idea. Peace of mind, having that redundancy of strengthening up the stand. What do you guys think so far? How do you guys think that the stand's coming out? Um, any ideas of uh, ways I could have done it better that you guys know about? Would definitely love to know about that in the comments down below. It's really cool seeing all this stuff come together though in quick speed. Um, I like watching things going, uh, you know, 10 times. This is in 10 times speed so that it, you know, goes quicker. I think it's really neat to see how just it comes together uh, really quick now the fun part painting the inside with it being a small space and having to adjust angles and switch arms because your arms are getting tired painting it's uh, definitely a little bit of a challenge painting the inside versus the outside that is for sure nonetheless we got it done we got it done so yeah for those of you who are um, you know new to the channel I am starting my first saltwater reef tank. I am super excited to be uh, jumping into the saltwater side of things. Uh, not a replacement whatsoever. It is an addition, an extension to my hobby of being a fish keeper. And uh, I couldn't be more excited to have uh, this saltwater reef project. And I will continue to be keeping African cichlids as well. Definitely, I love African cichlids. But like I said, adding another extension to the hobby, you know, being a fish keeper, not necessarily a species keeper, but a fish keeper. It's nice to add a little something, you know, to the hobby. What do you guys think? How many of you out there have a saltwater tank? Comment down below. Do you have a saltwater tank? Let us know in the comments section. What do you got? How big? Reef or just marine? What do you What are you guys doing? If you don't have salt, and you're doing freshwater. You know what kind of freshwater fish are you keeping? Love to see your guys' comments down below. As you can see, it's coming together. We're getting close. All of the tedious painting of all the corners and small pieces of lumber are all almost done. And now comes the fun part of, you know, getting the last little bit. Well, I guess it's not fun, but getting the last little bit of all the tedious stuff done and then working on getting the bottom painted. Now that's the easy part, using the roller. A lot easier. Uh, I definitely like a brush on all the small stuff because I want a nice, good, thick coat of paint on there um, so that it, uh, you know, seals it well. And uh, also setting up a fan to... Um, you know, have airflow on it at night, um, helped it dry really quick. So as you can see, the stand is ready to go. Now, something that I didn't show was this foam board. The reason that I built 
this extension was so that the foam board would be able to sit and there would still be a bit of a lip here so that the tank would sit in and still be inside of this top part of the stand. If I didn't do that, it would sit on top and that's not something I was wanting. As you can see, look at how much bigger these are than I originally did. Um, I pretty much cut it all the way back as far as I could to where the bottom part was of the original stand. So again, go bigger on the holes for the bulkheads. Got the shins in here, so once the tank goes on, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything is level. And then as far as the inside of the tank, Still got some things to decide on what to do, what size sump I'm going to be going with, and how I want to design the control system on the inside of this stand. But it's done. The doors will be the last thing to go on because I want the room here to work. Thank you so much for watching the video, everybody. What did you guys think? If you could comment down below on what you guys think of how the stand turned out, that would be awesome. Again, if you guys could click the subscribe button and that notification bell, I would be honored for you guys to join me on my fish keeping adventures by subscribing. You guys are all amazing. I am excited for this saltwater tank. Zoe right over there. Hey, Zoe, <laughs> what are you doing? Come here. Thanks everybody, I appreciate you guys watching. Please comment, like, share, subscribe, and stay tanked.